Hey there, and welcome to another Kidlet Lunch Critique. So today we have a story by Donna, and it's called Annie's Feet Hurt. And I know that I've read this story before, so I'm excited to see how the improvements have gone and uh, how you've made some changes to your story. So let's dive in. Ouch, ouch, ouch. My feet, or my feet feel awful on this ladder. Small ladder. But one more giant cannonball before I quit, just to splash my boys. Watch out below. When I limp through the sand and scrubby grass, my mom asks me what's wrong. I don't know, mom, but my feet hurt. Let me have a look. My mom is a nurse and her hands are gentle on my sandy feet. A neighbor, Dr. Franklin, is here at Loon Cove with his family too. He asks mom if he can check my feet. It's okay, Annie. He's a doctor for children's bones. Hi, Annie, I see you are limping. Yeah, my feet don't feel so good. He kindly pokes and prods and prods here and there around my wet, wrinkled feet. Dr. Franklin tells mom he wants me to visit his clinic someday soon, and my tummy tightens right up. Today is the day my tummy is already doing somersaults. Mom says there's that a lot of kids go to special doctors, and Dr. Franklin is one of the best to find out what is wrong with my feet. It's a busy visit, too. First, a nurse wraps my arm in a strap that squeezes it so tight, I jump with surprise. Yikes! The nurse says she's sorry, but she pinches my finger with a small plastic clip. Hey! I ask mom what the nurse is doing while she slides a fat wand across my forehead and down my cheek. She's checking your heart, your breathing, and your temperature. With these notes, the doctor will know how you feel today. I'm a little scared. Oh, Annie, will you, you will be okay. This is like a regular visit. Mom reaches over and takes my hand, but still goosebumps roll all over. Hi, Mrs. Meadow. Hi, Annie. I'm going to examine your feet again, okay? Dr. Franklin asked me. Annie and I have a room with an unusual machine inside. Down the hall, it takes pictures of your bones called x-rays. Will you let me show you? Can mom come too, I ask? Annie, she can come. See, but won't be able to stay. The x-ray nurse will be with you, okay? Okay. Okay. Um... And I will stay off the ladder. Okay. So I don't know if this is the end. So I'm excited. Okay. I can tell Davey, Billy, Donnie, and Jimmy how brave I am. I'm excited to swim with them again too at Loon Cove. And I will stay off those ladders for now. Um, okay. So I know originally when we read this book, it was going to be a picture book. I see that you've made it into a chapter book now, which is totally fine. Chapter books are great. Uh, the character could be, you know, somewhere between eight and 10 years old, just depending on the audience that you want for the reader. However, what I'm still getting is a picture book voice. Um, so you have a great story here. I know we talked about how whether or not a hard subject is something that we can talk about in a picture book, totally fine. You can talk about a picture book, you can do it in a chapter book, totally fine. Uh, it just depends on kind of who is this intended for? Who is the end reader for this book? Ages four to seven, you know, preschool through first grade or second grade, great for picture books. Ages five to eight, six to nine, seven to 10, great for chapter books, you know, but they're going to be reading it themselves. They won't be read too. So if you want an adult to be the one reading it, it kind of makes a difference. You have a lot of image notes in here, which is not something you would have in a picture book or in a chapter book, it would be reserved for picture books. So that's where I'm getting a confliction. It feels to me like you're trying, like you really wanna write a picture book, but you just don't feel like you've written a picture book. So you're trying to force it into a different category, which may or may not be true. But whenever we write for a category, it needs to fit what is expected from the reader. And it's just not something that you would see a bunch of images because it's very costly to do a bunch of illustrations in a chapter book. So that's why publishers don't really do it. Uh, it's such a small spine. We normally do them in series because they take up more shelf space. Books are normally around $15 to $16, sometimes a little bit less, depending on the hardcover. Um, so you don't want to spend a lot in the front end the same way you would with a picture book. So. If you're really trying to write a picture book, totally fine. You, your, your voice for a picture book has grown, has gotten there. You're doing so much better with this. You're still too descriptive for a picture book, but I know you tried to age it up. Um, but if you want to make this into a chapter book, we need to make it longer. So 
it's, it's just kind of up to you and really what you're trying to do with this story. And it's true for everyone. It really depends on what you're trying to do, who you're trying to reach and the story you're trying to tell. Then you learn how to fit that story into the category by learning the rules, learning the voice, learning the expectations, the plot, the word count, all of the things. And that's why we teach you, you know, at Kidlet Writing 101, we teach you through all of our courses and things how to do that because it is a little bit more uh, tricky than it first looks. When you look at a picture book, it looks very easy. And then you start to write it and you're like, oh, it's not as easy as I expected. So um, that would be my recommendation is to be really true to you and the story you're trying to tell and ask yourself, like, truly, who are you trying to fit this into? Are you trying to force it into a category that doesn't feel authentic? Or do you just need to learn a little bit more about the category and how you can edit your writing a little bit better to fit into the category you truly are trying to write for? That would be my highest recommendation for this book. Otherwise, um, you know, like these are probably chapter breaks and um, we would just format that a little bit differently. I teach a formatting class. I've done some live streams on that too. So you can always go and take a look at those if you need help. Um, but also you wouldn't have images. You would need to be describing them a lot more in a chapter book. We also should be tabbing in no matter what, when we have our sentences, just proper, um, proper writing, making sure to do that. And you really need to have complete thoughts. Um, you know, it's okay to not have the whole scene. Like we don't need to see the whole day. We can do our chapter breaks into new scenes, but you do need to have a complete scene that you are showing. So, you know, the reader should feel like they're there in the moment with Annie. Um, so that would be my recommendation for you. But otherwise, I think you're doing great. You're doing a lot of progress. The story flows a lot better and it's clearer than the first draft I saw. So it's getting there. So thank you so much for sharing again, Donna. And if you guys would like to share and get some critique notes as well, the link to submit is just below in the description. Thanks so much for tuning in.